Hey guys, Catlin here, lesson 13. This lesson might have had some of the tougher problems on it, especially this one with the, the house-like figure, but it's not like the house one that we did exactly. It's slightly different. It took me a minute to look at it and figure out what they um, were wanting you to find. But obviously this crystal shape is a prism, and what I'm shading here in blue, this shape is your base because that's what they extend out in all directions. But sadly for us, we can't just go straight across and make a triangle and a rectangle like we did with the example together in class. This one uh, was a little bit tougher to break down, so let's let's do it together. So this uh, this side right here, this is a this is F, right? And then we have a point there and a point there, and then it goes up to point E, right here, and then it goes down to point. D, which is actually not at the same level as F. You can see that clearly from the drawing. But that's big, and that kind of changes everything in the, in the problem, which I think is why a lot of you probably would struggle with this one. All right, so let's connect A and C. And then B, this is important. B is directly beneath E, so straight down from E is where B is located. So I think that's probably the part of the directions that threw, that if you don't understand that part, it's going to throw everything else off. And, and we haven't really done one of these in class and uh, talked about how to find their areas because if you actually draw a straight line from D, I'm sorry, E to B, straight down, what you create, I'm sorry my B wasn't perfectly straight down, but you get the idea, it creates two trapezoids. And we actually know all of the links that we need to find the area of these trapezoids. Now, you could break this down into, you could, I'm not going to because I think it would take longer. You could break this down into triangles there and there and two rectangles. That would be okay. But I'm going to go with the two trapezoids. It wouldn't be a bad thing for you guys to see a couple of trapezoids worked out anyway. Okay, so let me put that red line back on there. So we got two trapezoids and the area of a trapezoid, I'm going to call this one on the left. This will be my green trapezoid. Okay, and then the one on the right will be my purple trapezoid. And we're finding, we're trying to find the volume of this. So if we can get the area of this base, we can just multiply it by A to G, which is 4, and we'll be golden. So let's find the area of these trapezoids. So I'm going to write down the formula. The area of a trapezoid is equal to uh, base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 multiplied by the height of the trapezoid. This is for a trapezoid. This is not a formula for volume or anything like that we've been doing. This is the trapezoid formula. Uh, so in the green one, the bases are the red line BE and the blue line AF. So let's go through and let's label some of the things we know. We know that A to B is 2. Okay, we know that's 2. We know that B to C is 3, which is the height of the purple trapezoid. A to F is 6. Uh, B to E is 10. The red line here. C to D is 7, which is the other base of the other trapezoid. And, of course, A to G, which we'll need to know for later, is 4. So that will come in handy when we do the volume. So let's go back to the trapezoid. The base of the green trapezoid over here, the bases are 10 and 6 because those are the parallel sides. So you get 6 plus 10 over 2 multiplied by the height, which is how tall it is apart from the 2, which is 2. In this case, 6 and 10 makes 16. 16 cut in half and then multiplied by 2. Those just kind of cancel. So the uh, area of this one is 16 square units. All right. And then let's do the purple one next. The purple one is the same thing. Uh, we're going to follow the base 1, base 2 over 2. So the bases here are 10 and 7. 10 plus 7 over 2. Multiplied by the height, which is the distance between them, 3 in this case. And so 17 cut in half, multiplied by 3. Uh, let's see, half of 17 would be 8 and a half. And then 8 and a half times 3. Let's work that out over here. 8.5 times 3 is going to give me 15, 24 and 1. So 25 and a half. So this is 
So this means that together, 25.5 and my 16 from my other is going to be the full area of this shape. So get our 5, carry the 1, 3, 4, 41 and a half. So back to this. Okay, area of our blue shaded region here is 41 and a half millimeters squared. Okay, that's a big number. Okay, we need that number to be able to find the volume because the volume is the area of the base times the height of the prism. And now that we know the area of our base is 45.5, we just got to multiply by 4, the height of this prism. So that times that. Uh, I'm running out of shown workspace. Let's do it right here. 45 and a half times 4. So 20, carry the 2. 20, 2, carry the 2. 16 and uh, 16 and 2 make 18. And then we move it over. And we get 182. Let me double check that. 20, carry the 2. 22, carry the 2. 182 millimeters cubed is what I'm getting for that particular volume. So I had two trapezoids and then I added their areas together and then multiplied that by the height of the prism. That was a that was a tough one there. You could probably go some other directions with that, but I, I feel pretty confident that we did those correctly. Let's go back and check some of the base stuff. 6 and 10 divided by 2, 16, 8 and 2. Yep, so 16 for this one. For the purple one there, since the 10 and the 7 were your bases, you got 17 cut in half. And that's three times because its height was three. And then uh, you found their sum by adding it together, uh, the 16 and the 25 and a half. So 5 and 11 carry the 1. And then 3, 4, 41 and a half. Oh, there, I, I thought I was getting something weird, so sorry about that. Uh, I had a different number in my head. Uh, for this, this was supposed to be 41.5, so that changes when we multiply it right here, right? So 20 carry the 2, 4, this would give me a 6, sorry, and then just a regular 16, so sorry about that. 166, that makes more sense, so this should have been a 41 when I multiplied, and 166 millimeters cubed. I thought it looked a little weird when I first saw the answer. And that's why we go back and check. I just wrote down the number wrong whenever I was multiplying it by 4. Sorry about that. Okay, so 166 millimeters cubed. Number 2. Okay, rectangular prism with dimensions 5 by 13 by 10 was cut to leave a piece as shown in this image. What is the volume of this piece? Now, uh, let's see. I guess we could do uh, the base cut into... Uh, decomposed pieces. So let's draw, it's always a good idea to draw the base. This one is very tempting just to say it's a triangle, but you see down here at the bottom there's a little sliver that's one inch tall, right, that's one by five that we have to account for. Okay, so we got that one by five there. Now this was technically 13 tall to start, right? But since we took that one off, we're going to treat it like it's 12 because we've taken that one off. So we're thinking from here to here is 12, which is going to help us find that area. So the area of the rectangle is 5 times 1, which is 5. And the area of the triangle is 5 times 12, which is 60, cut in half because it's a triangle. So this is going to be 30 inches squared and 5 inches squared. So the area of our base. Our area of our base is 35 square inches. This is our base area. And then, of course, to find the volume, you have to do the area of the base times the height, which would be, in this case, 35 square inches multiplied by the height of the prism. The height of the prism is here, 10. It's the distance between the two bases, so 10 inches squared. I'm sorry, just 10 inches, just 10 inches, not squared because it's a distance for height, and then that would be 350 cubic inches when you multiply for number two. All right, and then number three, we're just picking all the ones that make sense for what's happening here. 
Uh, it looks like uh, 30 and C are vertical, so we're looking for those to be equal to each other. It appears that A and C are complementary, so they're going to add up to 90, and B and A are vertical. So let's see what we got here. 90 minus 30 would be B. Uh, since this is a complementary set, yes, I agree with that. That would say that B is 60, and I agree with that. These would be 30, so we can kind of go ahead and write those in. 30 plus B, so 30 plus B would be 90, and that would be equal to A plus C, which would also be 90. I like that. Uh, C, A plus C plus 30 plus B is 180. Ooh, okay, so A, C, 30, and B. So this angle and this angle, I'll add it together. That's a 90 plus a 90. That will make 180. Yes, I like that. A is 30. Nope, it's 60. A equals C equals 30. A does not equal C. A is not 30. Uh, 90 plus A and C would equal 180. Same thing as we've selected on C, right? 90 plus 90 is 180. So we definitely want that one. And that finishes up our second page.